We framed these guidelines because of the confusion around a number of other guidelines which had been produced and in particular the US Task Force guidelines which recommended that we abandon PSA testing completely. To do that would mean we'd go backwards 30 years when I started as a urologist and we'd see men presenting with their first presentation with bone metastasis and then a 12 month life expectancy thereafter. So what we tried to do is have clarity amongst these guidelines for particularly general practitioners and others working in prostate cancer so they would know what to advise men about risk and prostate cancer testing. The first statement is an important reminder of the level one evidence we have for the efficacy of PSA testing in reducing prostate cancer specific mortality. We have seen gains of 30 to 50% in prostate cancer specific mortality over the past 20 or 30 years thanks to this intervention and these are gains which must be maintained. However, as we emphasize in statement two, we must uncouple prostate cancer diagnosis from prostate cancer intervention by embracing active surveillance and thereby reducing the over-treatment effect that we have seen with the widespread use of PSA testing. We recognize that PSA testing on its own is not a good strategy and we strongly recommend a multivariable approach to the early detection of prostate cancer. While we await better markers and tools for identifying men at risk, we can still risk stratify and use a multivariable approach by using family history, risk prediction tools and newer markers which are gaining ground such as prostate health index and PCA3. We have good data to show that baseline PSA testing in men in their 40s has value for predicting prostate cancer in future years. And although the AUA guideline did not address PSA testing in this group of men, the EAU guideline does, and we agree that baseline testing of well-informed men in this age group has tremendous value. Just as the indiscriminate use of PSA testing in older men with many comorbidities should not be encouraged, it should be recalled that there are many older men who are of good performance status and who may be at risk of aggressive prostate cancer and who therefore may benefit from an early diagnosis. We chose to release this statement as a blog on the day in which it was presented at the Prostate Cancer World Congress for a couple of reasons. First, using social media is a wonderfully effective way of allowing a message to get out very quickly all around the world. But second, it allows our readership to engage with the content and it must be said that many of the comments we received through social media when we published that blog helped us in framing the final peer-reviewed version of the statement as it currently stands.